Joining me now to discuss is GOP strategist John Hart and Democratic strategist Kia Von Schroff. Thank you both for joining us. We're talking swing states here. That's where this is going to get decided. According to new polling data from the Hill and Decision Desk HQ, Trump is leading in four out of the seven battleground states. Kia, I'm going to go for you. Go to you first. What does this mean for Joe Biden? Is it too early to even make a difference, or is this going to give him some direction of where to focus his efforts? Hi, Vaughn. It's great to join. You know, I think it really doesn't make that much of a difference because we are talking about swing states here. So there really isn't much information new or old, frankly, that's going to change the strategy here, which is an all in as much as we can do in every state strategy, I think. So I do think there's a lot of potential for growth here. As you mentioned, the economy sort of is having some great results continue down month over month. There's been action on the border. Violent crime across the nation is down. So certainly a good story to tell. Now, John, the election five months away, the candidates have to attack each battleground state differently because each state has different issues. We're talking immigration issues in Arizona. You've got different sorts of issues with the American population in and in, of course, Michigan. So where is your advice for the candidates and how they should tackle these things? And do they really need these sort of bespoke methods for each place? Well, Caitlin, it's great to be on. And, you know, given uh, Biden's economic record and policies, this race should not be close. So inflation is 20 percent higher under Biden and families have to spend about a thousand dollars more per month. So when when President Biden says that the United States has a strong economy compared to the, the rest of the world, that's true. But in, in people's day to day lives, they vote on pocketbook issues. And when a family in Michigan has to spend 20 to 30 dollars going out for a hamburger and they spend more on groceries then you know, they spent 10 or $20, uh, you know, uh, a few few years ago. Those are the things that affect affect people's uh, uh, equations and decisions. Is It's all going to be pocketbook issues. And Biden's economic policies, as Larry Summers warned, who was uh, a chief economic advisor for President Clinton and Obama, he warned that Biden's stimulus would cause inflation to get worse. And that's exactly what happened. So, again, it's the $30 hamburger instead of the $20 hamburger those are the issues that are going to move the election. And also in, in Michigan in particular, it's energy policy. And, and John, and I, want to, I want to just keep you on this for one second and dig into this just a touch more. Where do you stand on young voters? Because a lot of young voters weren't buying burgers the last time Trump was in office. They were kids. So do young sorry. voters move the needle in one way or the other? And how do you target them? Well, look, I, I think I think it cuts multiple ways with younger voters. I think I think, you know, what President Biden has tried to do is to appeal to younger voters with with the climate change message. And look, our, look I started an organization called the Conservative Coalition for Climate Solutions because I believe it's it's critical that the GOP and conservatives reach that younger, younger generation. But the policy answer is not more top down command and control. Uh, climate policy, the answer is more economic freedom and energy abundance. And that, it, that what that does is it stimulates economic growth and makes uh, new cleaner technologies be deployed much, much faster. So Joe Biden wants to be car dealer in chief, not just commander in chief and tell people what they have to drive. And that's not a great message in Michigan. So that's going to lose not just you know, you know older voters, but younger voters as well. Who pe people want choice, and Biden's economic policies are taking choices away and making prices go up. And so, if President Trump wants to be successful, he has to get out of his own way. And and if, of course, you remember that you know I was a Nikki Haley supporter, and she did far better against Biden than Trump did because she was able to focus on policy and those key policy differences that really affect elections. And that's what President Trump ought to do is is understand why some of his his opponents, you know, he. He, he's defeated them, but they were much better against Biden than he's he's proven to be so far. The former president often struggles with focusing on policy, especially when he is at a microphone. But Kaivon, I want to ask you a question about this $28 million that the Biden campaign reportedly raised. I mean, how do you think that this fundraiser landed? I mean, it clearly, we're not shoring up votes in California here. It's really about the money, right? 
Absolutely. You know, I think the Biden campaign has taken a bit of a different tack with these surrogates. I was on the Clinton campaign where very much, you know, you had every A-lister out campaigning on behalf of the campaign. I think this really was, as you point out, about a fundraiser and really using the celebrities for that purpose, which I think is much more effective and relatable. And, you know, sort of you want to talk about Larry Summers. He's out tweeting this morning about how disastrous Trump's economic plan is. So I do think that slowly, you know, with the money, with the, with the way the money is being spent, which is really important, right? Because the Biden campaign is spending its fundraising cash on opening offices, on targeted ads, on reaching out to those critical voters in those swing states we're talking about. The Trump campaign is not doing that. They're very disorganized. They're spending a lot of cash on its legal issues. So totally different picture there. And that matters. You know, I was at Trump Tower the day after that verdict was read out and Donald Trump came out and really touted all of these small, these small donors that came in overnight, bringing in tens of millions of dollars that they claimed. So, you know, Kaivon, do you feel like because he's using this money, it's coming in, but it's going to legal issues. Do you think that's going to hamper him come time for the election and tip things in Joe Biden's favor. Certainly, you know, I think it's not just you say claimed, which I appreciate because we can't trust this campaign on what they're saying with these numbers. But also, look, if Republicans really felt this was such a win for Trump being convicted of 34 felonies, he wouldn't be begging everyone behind closed doors, running to Mike Johnson for them to intervene in this situation. And I think you're absolutely right. You know, we have some polling out about these swing states that you just mentioned. But the reality is the full story of Trump being a convicted criminal has not yet been reflected there. And also, also the positive Biden messages. And look, like Trump was in Michigan yesterday. Everywhere Trump goes that he tries to reach beyond the extreme MAGA base of older white folks, it's a failure. He went to the Bronx and got booed out of there. He went to the Libertarian Convention, got booed out of there. He had this black event for his black supporters. It was old white folks that showed up to that church. He had this Charlie Kirk event that's supposed to target young folks. It's the same group of groupies that travel around the country that are these, again, retribution-seeking folks. It's not an appealing message to anyone. I want to give the last word to you here, John, about these swing states and the fact that Trump is polling better there. Do you think that trend is going to continue? Well, I think it could. I think, and, and to Kava's point, I think, I think his take is wishful thinking that, look, people are not going to rush back to the Democratic agenda uh, because, again, it's led to higher inflation, higher costs. And Trump actually did quite well with minority voters during his presidency. Uh, because, again, when he focuses on economic policy and freedom, he does well. When he focuses on himself, he does very poorly. And so that's really the, his my advice to the Trump campaign is focus on the issues and, and let the grievance uh, go. All right. GOP strategist John Hart and Democratic strategist Kaivon Trop Trop Kaivon, I mispronounced my own name a couple of weeks ago, so you're in your good, no worries good at all. Form. We won't have that will not happen again. Now it's burnt into <laughs> my brain. Good. Thank you guys so much for your insight here. Okay.